Thank you very much for joining us again for another video for OG Solutions Incorporated. Today I wanted to talk about Phase 2 Environmental Site Assessments, ESAs. Um, we got another video that was related to Phase 1 Environmental Site Assessments, which um, as a short description of them, uh, they're basically just a liability check, an environmental liability check to make sure that uh, there are no potential environmental dangers um, that are easily identifiable uh, through a document uh, review. Now, the phase two um, environmental site assessment is basically what happens after a phase one. Um, you might say that's pretty obvious, but the phase two is uh, acting on those items that are identified on the phase one. So um, typically it would require uh, some test pits to be completed to identify the areas or the potential extent of a contaminant of concern in a certain area that has already been identified as a uh, area of environment, potential environmental concern. Uh, for a certain contaminant of concern. So say for example, if you have uh, identified on the phase one that there was an oil tank back in 1960 that was installed at this property, it was later removed in 1980s and you're doing your assessment today, well, guess what? I'm gonna be doing an assessment straight in that area because that will be an area of concern. So you'll be doing either test pits or you'll be doing borehole drilling or examining the area through other more advanced methods that are uh, emerging technologies at the moment. But basically the uh, the whole purpose of that is to identify the extent of the contaminant of concern both laterally and vertically so that you can uh, determine a path of action basically. So now the contaminants of concern they vary from property to property. Um, they're not always going to be the same um, but obviously you will always be checking for potential underground buried tanks uh, that might have uh, been present on the property, some sort of chemical activity that might have gone on. Is it, was it a dry cleaners or was it a mechanic shop at some point or was it a gas station at some point? Uh, you'll be acting on those items to try and uh, determine the uh, the contaminant of concern. And, and the contaminant of concern really is what drives the cost of the uh, phase two. And the, the cost of the phase two varies significantly uh, from project to project because of the uh, uh, issue that the contaminants of concern vary from property to property. So because of that, uh, there's likely more work involved to identify the extent of each one of those contaminants as well as the requirement to do some extra sampling for each one of those contaminants of concern so that we can understand the extent um, um, of the contaminant in the property and then from there identify a set of solutions that might be possible for the property uh, to uh, to deal with the contaminants of concern. So that's basically the result of the uh, phase two is to uh, provide the client uh, with an idea of where the contaminants are, how much are um, how much of them uh, is present uh, in the property, either in the soil or in the water, and then um, identify a path of action so that the next stage, uh, which some people identify or mention it to be a phase three environmental site assessment. Um, that's just a term that has been coined uh, to uh, address the remediation stage of the phase two. Uh, so what results of the phase two uh, will turn into this remediation phase, which later on um, becomes the cleanup of the property. So if you have any questions, uh, please do reach out. Uh, phase twos vary significantly from property to property, but you definitely want to be able to identify the contaminants of concern through a phase one, uh, the locations of concern, and then act upon it by uh, by doing your remediation and your further assessment as well. So if you have any questions or comments, please do um, reach out to me. My email is oliver at ogsolutions.com or you can reach me at 647-588-7660. Thank you and have a good week.